The ten plagues of Egypt, described in the book of Exodus, were ten disasters brought on by God when Pharaoh refused to let the Israelite nation leave Egypt. For 400 years, the Israelites were enslaved people in Egypt until God sent Moses to deliver his chosen people. Pharaoh's heart and mind were so intent on keeping the Israelites in servitude that the Egyptians suffered great tragedies. Moses and Aaron warned Pharaoh of an impending locust plague, but he agreed to let only the men go to hold a feast to the Lord. The women and children had to stay behind. But God would not have the men in the wilderness while their families were still in Egypt. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, then hear this. Tomorrow I will bring my greatery locusts into your country. They shall cover the visible surface of the land so that no one will be able to see the ground. And they will eat the rest of what has remained, that is, the vegetation left after the hail. And they will eat every one of your trees that grows in the field. Your houses and those of all your servants and all of the Egyptians shall be filled with locusts, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen from their birth until this day. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be a trap to us? Let the men go, so that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not realize that Egypt is destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God. Who specifically are the ones that are going? Moses said. We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, all of us and all that we have, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. Pharaoh said to them, The Lord be with you to help you, if I ever let you go with your children, because you will never return. Look, be forewarned. You have an evil plan in mind. No, go now, you who are men, without your families, and serve the Lord, if that is what you want. So Moses and Aaron were driven from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so that they may come up on the land of Egypt and eat all the plants of the land all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind had brought the swarms of locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled down in the whole territory, a very dreadful mass of them. Never before were there such locusts as these, nor will there ever be again. For they covered the visible surface of the land, so that the ground was darkened, and they ate every plant of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. There remained not a green thing on the trees or the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh hurried to call for Moses and Aaron, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, please forgive my sin only this once more, and pray and entreat the Lord your God so that he will remove this plague of death from me. Exodus 10 Next, God sent frogs over the land. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the streams and canals, over the pools among the reeds, and make frogs come upon the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff over the waters of Egypt, 
and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians, soothsayer priests, did the same thing with their secret arts and enchantments and brought up more frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let the people go so that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, I am entirely at your service. When shall I plead with the Lord? For you and your servants and your people, so that the frogs may leave you and your houses and remain only in the Nile. Exodus 8, 1 to 9. The Plague of Blood-Sucking Insects For if you do not let my people go, hear this. I will send swarms of blood-sucking insects on you and on your servants and on your people and into your houses, and the houses of the Egyptians will be full of swarms of insects, as well as the ground on which they stand. But on that day I will separate and set apart the land of Goshen, where my people are living, so that no swarms of insects will be there so that you may know without any doubt and acknowledge that I, the Lord, am in the midst of the earth. I will put a division, distinction between my people and your people. By tomorrow, this sign shall be in evidence. Then the Lord did so, and there came heavy and oppressive swarms of blood-sucking insects into the house of Pharaoh and his servants' houses. In all the land of Egypt, the land was corrupted and ruined because of the great invasion of insects. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God here in the land of Egypt. Exodus 8, 21-25 Since men can use animals like the horse and dogs to do his will, it stands to reason that the Creator's use of them is even greater and more purposeful in demonstrating His power in accomplishing His goal. Notice Genesis 2.19 So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. Genesis 2, 19 And whatever Adam named each living creature, that was its name. God brings animals before Adam to be named. Genesis 6, 20 Of fowls and birds according to their kind, of animals according to their kind, of every crawling thing of the ground according to its kind, Two of every kind shall come to you to keep them alive. God directs even carefree birds to come to Noah. Genesis 9-2 introduces something new. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. This implies that the dread is new, something God added to alter their relationship with mankind. Amidst the plagues in Egypt, God employs and handles even the smallest of creatures. Before this, God brought forth vast numbers of frogs. But the important element here is that he chooses to demonstrate his dominion by refusing to allow small flying insects, seemingly free, to go anywhere they wished, into Goshen, the dwelling place of the Israelites. This reveals God as sovereign over animals.